Captain Midnight. This video is brought to you by Curiosity Stream. Joker is the most profitable comic book movie ever made. At well over a billion dollars at the box office, it may not touch Endgame's total gross, but it also cost a fraction of what the fourth Avengers did to make, with a production budget hovering around $62 million. Now that's definitely a lot of money, but compared to Endgame's $356 million, well, I think you get the picture. And even though Joker might be the most talked about movie of 2019, one thing that I don't think has been discussed enough is the potential impact that it could have on the future of superhero films, especially DC movies themselves. Because when a movie does this well at this budget, there's going to be more than a few studios interested in replicating that success. Now Joker was always positioned as an alternative to most comic book movies by DC. Instead of trailers promising jokes, a world ending threat, and a thrill ride, Warner Brothers very smartly sold its film on being an adult drama, a throwback to the gritty 70s, more so than a Joker adventure. The film leans into that right away, opening with an old WB logo, not any sort of elaborate DC Universe logo like you'd find in a Justice League. It wants you to know right up top that this is not Suicide Squad or Aquaman. This is a film that's going to try to tackle big ideas and uncomfortable themes. Now whether you think it succeeded in that or not, I'll leave up to you. As I talked about in a previous video, I thought it worked really well. But no matter what you think about it, the undeniable fact is that it delivered huge for Warner Brothers. So it's pretty interesting to think about where they can go from here. The thing is, we probably won't see the effects of Joker on DC's output for at least a year or two. Birds of Prey may end up being great, I have no idea, but it's obviously much more in line with something like Suicide Squad or even Deadpool than Todd Phillips' more somber drama. Matt Reeves' Batman may be a new, more grounded noir take on the caped crusader, but it's probably safe to say it won't be anywhere near as stripped down and grim as Joker. Same with Wonder Woman 1984, The Rock's Black Adam, Aquaman 2, and um, that Ezra Miller Flash movie that's currently on its like 715th director. New and improved Joker products with a new secret ingredient, smiling. So yeah, it may take a little while before we see the full impact the Joker will have, but I really do think it'll happen eventually. The first and most literal form that would take would probably be a sequel, because despite playing it off like there was almost no chance of a second film before Joker opened, Todd Phillips now appears to be in serious talks for another film, with the director also looking to do even more DC villain stories. Though to be fair, that last part is being pretty heavily disputed. And Joaquin Phoenix seems especially enthusiastic about a Joker too, saying, In the second or third week of shooting, I was like, Todd, can you start working on a sequel? There's way too much to explore. So it seems very likely, though maybe not set in stone, that Phoenix will return as Arthur in some way, shape, or form. And that brings up a lot of interesting questions, because as Phillips has said, Joker isn't really a movie made with sequels in mind. I mean, the director himself has even floated the possibility that Arthur isn't the Joker at all, but merely the person who inspired the Clown Prince of Crime. And in a way, I do think that makes a lot of sense. The Joker of this film was not a person who could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Batman. He rarely thought ahead or smartly predicted the actions of others, like the character is generally known for. So the idea of him facing down Pattinson's Dark Knight feels a little far-fetched. Not only that, it could easily destroy the thing that set Joker apart, the far more realistic approach to Gotham City. But I don't think that means there's no way to do a great sequel. So okay, here's my goofy fanboy pitch for it. Honestly, feel free to do your own in the comments or just let me know what you think. Obviously, the Joker was heavily inspired by Taxi Driver and King of Comedy. So why not continue that tradition and have Joker 2 take notes from the 1975 classic One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest and do nearly an entire movie set in Arkham. We still have years and years between the end of the first film and Bruce being old enough to take up his mantle as Batman. So I don't see any reason to jump 
right into that. Instead, they could explore Arthur becoming a more analytical and maybe a more manipulative person, having him lead a rebellion of Arkham's patients against the institution's staff and managers. I think this could build off pretty naturally where we leave him in Joker, where he's become a powerful symbol to Gotham's poorest and most desperate residents. But taking that off the streets and into the oppressive, claustrophobic environment of Arkham, where this Joker universe could potentially even introduce its take on some of Batman's classic villains. I know I'd love to see what Phillips and company could do with characters like Scarecrow or Clayface. Honestly, adapting them to a more realistic setting could make them a lot more disturbing. But more than anything, this would be a story about Arthur, where in the last film he inspired a movement almost completely on accident, Joker 2 could see him harnessing his newfound fame and becoming a more competent and methodical villain, while maybe giving up even more of his humanity in the process. Like a Walter White in clown makeup. So that's my pitch. Set it in Arkham as Arthur takes the reins of a growing rebellion. Total teamwork! Total tech! Total justice! Led by new fractal armor Batman and his thundering optical cannon, the but I really don't think the impact of this film will stop at just the sequel. Like I said, one of the things that definitely has studios taking notes is the low production budget, and I wouldn't be surprised to see some other superhero universe characters going in the same direction. And honestly, I don't think this is a bad thing at all. It means that directors would have to get more creative, not being able to rely on the good old third act battle that goes on for 20 minutes. Now that can work great too, but we've had so much of it. Low budget does not equal bad, and 60 million isn't even low, it's just low for a comic book film. There are also things like Todd McFarlane's Spawn movie over at Blumhouse, which might be happening, although things seem a little up in the air right now. I'm hardly the biggest Spawn fan in the world, but I'm definitely intrigued by the idea of an actually low budget R-rated comic book film that has to rely on suspenseful filmmaking techniques and a very stripped down, focused story. I'd love to see a horror focused Swamp Thing film that digs into the thoughtful, metaphysical stuff of the Alan Moore run even more than the Swamp Thing on DC Universe did. Or a Green Arrow movie that embraces the funny and socially crusading aspects of the character that the CW mostly ignored. Giving us a real low tech hero that touches on the political ideals that the character has often had in the comics. According to news that came out a few months ago, there may already be a Lex Luthor movie in development that sees the character take over as President of the United States. Again, all this stuff could be great, or they could be awful, but at the end of the day, they'd be breaking the comic book movie mold, and I think there's something inherently exciting about that. Decades of comics have seen all these characters interpreted in so many ways. Lex Luthor could be President in one comic, or an old-fashioned mad scientist in another. And as long as writers and artists find a take that feels true to the spirit of the character, I think they can all work together. And after so many years of comic book movies, there's no reason why these films can't do the same. A character like the Joker can show up on Teen Titans Go or be the center of a dark adult drama. And I don't think one version is any less valid than the other. And that's what makes these comic book universes so exciting. Characters you love being passed down through the years, with wildly different spins every time. And I'd love to see the movies embrace that even more. Swamp Thing rises again to crush evil Arcade's monster maker. Help! Arcade has got me in his clutches! With my transducer, I can create an army of unmanned monsters! So few fandoms can rival DC in terms of just how passionate they are, but one that probably can is Star Trek. And if you're a fan of both, I've got a movie to recommend, Trek Nation. It follows the son of the creator of Star Trek as he really digs into what the show means to people for the first time. I found it really funny and like weirdly moving, and you can find it on Curiosity Stream. This is basically the place to go if you're a fan of documentaries, because it's home to thousands of them on all sorts of topics. But it doesn't stop there. You'll also be able to get Nebula with the same subscription. A new streaming service made by independent creators like Lindsay Ellis, Just Right, CGP Grey, and me. A lot of creators are finding new ways to make content on Nebula, outside the demands of YouTube. So you can support independent creators and get tons of high quality documentaries just by signing up for their annual membership only $19.99 for the entire year. Get access to all of that and a free trial by going to curiositystream.com slash Captain Midnight, which you'll find in the description and pinned comment below. Your 
a special tip for the fellows and girls who have not already joined Captain Midnight's new 1940 flight patrol. You'd better hurry up and join at once because there's a big adventure ahead. The thing to do now is to get started because we're going to have not only barrels of fun, but loads of free gifts and prizes too.